How's it going everyone? My name is Logan Kilpatrick. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use structs in Julia. And structs are the most commonly used type in Julia because they allow us to define other custom types similar to classes in an object-oriented programming language. Let's look at this in action. We'll start off by using the keyword struct to help define our struct. Followed by the keyword struct, you'll put in the name of the struct that you wanna use, and then we'll go down to the next line, and here we'll define the actual fields that we want. I'm gonna just put in some placeholder blank field names to begin with, but you could use whatever field names uh, best represent the type that you're working with. And we'll end the definition of a struct using the end keyword. So now we've defined the structure of what our my obj struct is going to look like. Let's actually go and create an object using this structure. So we've created our first object. We've called it my object one. And when we call the creation of this object, we pass in two variables, which correspond to the field names that we defined to begin with. So in this case, we're passing in two strings, hello and world, and those get corresponded to field one and field two. We can confirm this by doing the following. You can see when you type in my object one dot field one, we're able to access the first argument that we originally passed in when we created that object. The thing to note here is that structs are immutable by default, which means we can't change the field values once we've created this object. We can create a new object, but it won't be the same one as we started with. So if I try to do something like the following, you'll see that we get an error because we're trying to change the value of an immutable struct, which doesn't work. It's impossible. Next, we'll look at mutable structs, which really give us the power to sort of change an object on the fly as we see fit. So we'll start the creation of a mutable struct by using the keyword mutable and then struct. In this example, we'll use a human as a test case for creating our first objects. We'll do so we'll do a mutable struct person, and we'll actually create some fields associated with this person object. So we'll do a name, We'll specify that the type of the name field is going to be a string so that when the person object is created, the person creating the person object must pass us the string in the form of a name. And for the age, we'll do a float 64. And again, we'll finish off the definition of this mutable struct using the end keyword. So now we can go about actually creating this person object. And boom, we've gone ahead and created this person object. And now you can imagine, you know, maybe I age over time and my, you know, name changes or I get older. And so what we can actually do is do something like Logan.age plus equals one. And you can now see that my age went up from the original number of 44 to 45, which really highlights the power and, and some of the use cases for why you might want to use a mutable struct. The other thing to note is, again, we, we specified the type of the person object. So if we go to create a new person object, and we'll use a different name instead of mine here, to Bob, if I don't pass in a string here, if I pass in a number instead, like the number's 20 and the number's 44, we'll actually get an error, and it'll say, hey, you defined the person object to take in a string and a float, and right now you're trying to pass in two numbers, which doesn't work. So this really, again, allows us to be very specific and intentional about the way we want these objects to be defined. So now that we've looked at the way of using the default constructor as part of a struct, let's look at how we can use a custom constructor, which we'll look at and make use of in this example. So here we've defined the mutable struct. And again, the big difference is the default constructor, if we go to try to create this object, it's looking for us to pass three pieces of information, the name, the age, and whether or not this person is active, true or false in this context. But what we've actually done is we've created a new constructor within this mutable struct, which only requires that we pass the name and the age and we're actually just gonna set is active to true by default. And you can see this happening using that new keyword. Every default constructor needs to have at the end of the function, this special new keyword, which actually goes and creates the object itself. So again, here we're taking the name, we're taking the age, and then by default, we're setting the third attribute, which is is active equal to true. So we can go actually run this and check and make sure it works. 
And here we'll just pass in for this person object, we'll pass in just the name and just the age. And you can see now we have this person object with my name set correctly, with the age set correctly, and true by default. So this is a great way of sort of customizing how you actually go about creating some of these mutable structs. The last thing I wanna show about structs is how we can actually use methods, associate methods and functions with a specific object. So here we're gonna define a birthday class and what the birthday class is gonna do is just increment the year or the age of the person by a single year. So we'll use the keyword function, we'll call the function birthday, and the birthday function is gonna take in an object and we're gonna call it person, and the type of that object is gonna be of type person. So we have a variable named person, lowercase p, and we have an uppercase p, which is corresponding to the actual type of the object. And here we'll do person.age plus equals one. So now we've defined this birthday function. Let's actually call it using a, one of the objects we've created. So we'll call birthday, we'll pass in new person one to that. And you can see automatically the function is returning the value 28. So let's see if it's actually changed the original value from new person one. And awesome, we can see that it was successful. So we, we both got a return value from that function showing us the values been updated. And we confirm that again by doing new person one dot age showing the value of 28. So again, to recap, we talked about a bunch of different things in this video so far. We talked about structs. By default, they're immutable. We talked about how structs have different fields and we can customize whether we want those fields to have a specific type or not. We talked about how we can use mutable structs to actually change the value associated with an object after it's been initialized. And then at the very end, we touched on how you can use default constructors um, and then create new constructors, as well as create methods which actually operate on specific objects that we create. So a whirlwind tour of structs, but hopefully this helps sort of formalize some of the ideas around how you can actually use structs in the real world in practice and why they're such a valuable operation, especially for people coming to the Julia ecosystem who have an object oriented programming background. Structs are a really nice way of sort of embodying some of these ideas without Julia being a full object oriented programming language. So, so we'll see you in the next video. Take care.